it's an excellent time to be practicing dermatology. Are you ready for the therapeutic hotline? My name is Jim Del Rosso, a dermatologist practicing in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I have with me Dr. Andrew Alexis, a dermatologist in New York, and Dr. Samal Desai from the great state of Texas. So, Samal, I want to start by talking to you about vitiligo, and let's take the scenario that it's a patient coming in, they don't have it for that long, they're noticing some, some new areas, and they're obviously very concerned about it, it's very alarming. So how do you approach that patient? Is there anything we can do to stop the disease? Absolutely, and I think there are things we can do to stop the disease. I think the most important thing we should all do is give patients hope and let them know there are things we can do to help them. I think we know that active vitiligo needs to be stabilized. We have studies now that show the longer you wait to treat a deep pigmented area, the harder it is to get the color back. We know that those melanocyte stem cells eventually do die off because of that CD8 infiltration into the skin. What I really like to do is stabilize these patients with systemic steroids. And I usually do this for about eight weeks on average, and I usually do it with a very easy regimen of prescribing patients what's called oral mini pulse therapy, which is two pills a week, one pill on Saturday, one on Sunday of dexamethasone, and it's four milligrams. And this was work that was done out of India with a big group there who really has done a lot of work in systemic steroids in the disease. These patients tend to do really well. They tolerate it well, and you just have to monitor them for regular mineralocorticoid issues similar to prednisone. But the good thing is, is you don't need to be worried about these patients immediately developing osteopenia or osteoporosis from twice weekly dosing of a, of a drug that's much less farther down on the HPA axis suppression issue compared to prednisone, let's say, which does, we all use. Does oral work better than giving them injection? So, intramuscular so injection? I'm really glad you brought that up because injections were really what we used to do. We used to do intramuscular injections of triamcin, lonacetinide, and I usually just do 60 milligrams every four to five weeks for three to four months. And those patients did really well. But this dexamethasone is nice because it gives you a consistent amount of immunosuppression. We've actually showed some superiority to IM injections. So really, I've switched everyone over to oral when I can to stabilize. Is there anything we should be giving topically along with this system? So topical treatment? steroids, topical calcineurin inhibitors are still our mainstay. I encourage people to use those. I use them in combination with phototherapy. And I also give patients oral antioxidants particularly alpha lipoic acid and polypodium leucotomus. And it's very easy. You give patients to tell, tell them to take one in the morning and you take one at night. And I think as we involve in phototherapy and antioxidants, I think the new JAK inhibitors, which we really like to talk about right. topical and oral, I think are really something that we can look in our horizon. So stabilize the disease, treat with antioxidants, use phototherapy, don't be scared to do so, and look for JAK inhibitors because like you said, we hope to have some good luck with that. Yes, we can say hit the road, JAK. Hit the road, JAK. To vitiligo. That. That's great. So Andrew, now we have the other end of the spectrum, melasma, which is obviously very frustrating to especially to our female patients obviously so how do you approach that and are we still using hydroquinone what concentration how long and people are always wondering about ochronosis acquired ochronosis exactly so, so when managing melasma it's really important from the very first visit with the patient to emphasize that this is a long-term condition this is a chronic relapsing condition and so questions do come up about the duration of therapy with hydroquinone given that we know that there's a risk of exogenous ochronosis from excessively long-term use of hydroquinone so I typically limit my continuous use of hydroquinone, 4% uh, formulations, to approximately six months, and then begin to taper or discontinue after six months, shifting gears to various non-hydroquinone formulations that are available, topical azelaic acid, topical retinoids, topical cosmeceuticals that have uh, increasingly been shown to affect uh, hyperpigmentary disorders. Ingredients such as uh, vitamin C, kojic acid, niacinamide, all have been uh, shown in various formulations to improve pigmentation. I've heard you say before that the triple combination of utilizing the hydroquinone with the retinoid and the low potency corticosteroid. Can you elabor elaborate on that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because out of all the hydroquinone agents that are available, the one formulation that has the largest body of evidence for safety and efficacy is the triple combination containing 4% hydroquinone, fluocinolone 0.1%, and tretinoine 0.05%. And that's been used for six continuous months, even up to 12 months without uh, evidence of exogenous ochronosis or even uh, significant right. atrophy. Exogenous ochronosis has been all these other sources that are uncontrolled use, and who knows where they're even getting. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. As I said, this is an excellent time to be practicing dermatology. So there you go with 
pigmentary disorders.